1939 through 1945, Hitler put most of the Jewish population of Europe into concentration camps. Over six million people died during this massacre, but some were fortunate enough to live through it and tell their stories. This is the story of two men who survived the Holocaust. One man's name is Martin Morgan, and the other is Saul Klein. These stories will be told by their wives, Betty Morgan and Mary Klein. Winter was coming to an end, and the Russians were near Auschwitz. The temperature was just dropping below 20 degrees, and the Germans had just gotten orders to transport the prisoners to Mauthausen. We were there for less than a week, then we were transported to milk. I worked in an underground tunnel for four months. The last camp I was in was Ebensee, which was by far the worst camp because not even the Germans had food. During the march, the road was lined with dead bodies of people who had gotten too weak to move on. We were later then put in a boxcar along with other prisoners. If you looked too weak or sick to be of use as a worker, then you were shot on the spot. At one of the later stops in Prague, Czechoslovakia, I remember people coming to the train with bread filled with sugar and offering it to us. These people were immediately shot by the German SS soldiers. We were then forced into extensive labor in Ebensee. After six years of waking up not knowing if it was my last day or not, the Americans liberated Ebensee. On May 6, 1945, I was finally free. My name is Martin Morgan, and I am one of the few people to survive the Holocaust. My name is Saul Klein, and I too survived the Holocaust. It was January 1945, and the Germans knew they were falling to the Allies. So we were put on the train and the, what they now call the Dead March. I recall hearing gunshots coming from the Russian front off in the distance. They stopped the train and made all get out so they could transport the German soldiers to a new location. During all this, there was a lot of confusion so me and a few others seized the opportunity to escape into a nearby forest. We arrived at a farmhouse owned by a Polish farmer. He also knew that the Russians were approaching. He was kind enough to provide us with food and shelter for a few days. When the Russians liberated me at the farmhouse, one Russian soldier tried to take my boots from me. I thought to myself, I can't believe that the people who are liberating me are trying to take my boots. I got lucky, and the boots did not fit the men, so I got to keep them. After it was safe to leave, my brother and I returned back home. For the first time in six years, I felt free. I was born into a poor Jewish family on May 2, 1927, in Konski, Poland. My life growing up was not easy. At a young age, I was obligated to start working on my father's rented orchards. I never attended school as a child because my father needed me to help out with jobs around the farm. I have memories from when I was young of people throwing rocks at me because I was Jewish. Because of my childhood and the events that occurred, I had to mature and become an adult at a much younger age. Growing up a poor man's life gave me an advantage in the Holocaust other privileged Jews didn't have. On December 10th, 1922, I was born into a very large family and grew up in Kielce, Poland. My father was a tailor, and my mother sold fabrics door to door to raise extra money that we needed. Growing up with six siblings, money was always tight, so my parents were very strict. All through my childhood, and in turn, we needed to be very obedient. Leading up to the war, school became harder to concentrate because the Polish students became disrespectful to the Jewish population. I remember on multiple occasions when the Polish kids would throw rocks at me and beat me up after school. Although growing up in Poland was very difficult, it taught me how to survive in a concentration camp. In 1939, when I was 12 years old, Poland was invaded by Russian and Germany. 
Soon after the Germans sectioned off a part of the city off where the Jewish were forced to live and work. These places were called ghettos. Food was very scarce in the ghetto, so one day my father gave me money to get food from a farmer he knew. I left, and about 10 miles from the city, I took my star off so people wouldn't know I was Jewish. I rented a horse and a cart and filled the cart with food. I brought the food back into the ghetto. We kept some, but my father also sold a portion for a little money. Later, while I was still living in the ghetto, I was working on a pig farm when a nearby brick factory was blown up. They accused me and six other boys of doing this, even though I didn't. I was taken to jail where I would hear people being executed every night. We feared all the time that we would be next. One day at three or four in the morning, a guard came in and put all of the prisoners on a train to Auschwitz. This is where my journey began. When I was 17, I was forced into the ghetto, like many of the other Jews in Poland. While I was in the ghetto, I was taken near the Russian border to walk. One day, I was reaching down to get some water from a stream. While I was getting the water, a German soldier started shooting at me because I was not working. I looked up, and because I looked up, uh, the bullet missed my head and hit my finger. My finger was hanging from my hand, and finally, after two days, they cut it off. Because of my injuries, they sent me back to the ghetto in Poland. After this event, I was sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau with my brother in the camp. I met Martin Morgan, and we helped each other survive throughout our experience. In the camp, Saul and I worked together organizing people's luggage who came into the camp. This gave us the opportunity to take the things such as food, alcohol, and jewelry. At the end of the day, we would put the taken goods into a long coat I owned. The German soldiers would pat me down to make sure I wasn't stealing, but they would never check my coat. So I would take the items that helped me survive back into the barracks where we slept. I would share the food I got with my friends to help me survive. It would have been nearly impossible to survive if I hadn't taken the extra food. Some of the worst times were when they made us watch the execution of people who tried to escape. I remember one day when I was helping unload prisoners that were coming into the camp. One boxcar was filled with dead people that had lime all over their bodies. In this group of corpse, there was one little girl that was still alive. The German soldiers were going to shoot her on the spot. I remember she looked terrified and she was holding her hand in front of her face, scared that she was going to be shot right there. I could not bear to watch this, so I bribed the soldier with some gold not to shoot her, so they didn't. Even though I think she was killed later, I'm glad I didn't have to see her get shot. The living conditions that I endured were hell. There were three layers of punks, and Martin and I would sleep in the middle ones. Oftentimes, there were people on the top bunk that were too sick to leave the bunk because they had little energy to make it to the bathroom. They would often have to go in their beds, which would seep through their beds onto me. In the morning, we were fed bread and coffee. We worked throughout the day without lunch, and at night, all that we were given was bread, soup, and water. One day, I was pushing over a suitcase full of medicine to the woman's camp. I saw an SS soldier coming, so I tried to hurry. I lost my balance and fell into the electric fence and started to get electrocuted. One of Martin's good friends from the other side, Samson was his name, took the end of the shovel and pushed my body off the fence. If it was not for him, I probably would have died. Both Saul and I lost a lot of family members and friends in the Holocaust. We were glad that we helped some people survive, including each other. I feel that surviving the Holocaust made me a stronger person. My friends, Saul Klein, Bill Klein, Saul Arnstein, Abe Stern, Matt Ziegelman, and Samson made it possible for me to live through these awful times. We never thought that we would be lucky enough to survive. Many times during the war, I was faced with death, but I forced my way through survival and now have a special bond 
with the people that endured this experience with me.